All right, so we talked about allow shrink and allow expand, and I did skip a section up here on mask and unbrush. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. Uh, in order to explain that function, I'm going to go out of edit mode, hit control in to clear my canvas. And we're going to go up here to a plane 3D, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. And we just have a plane. If you're just joining us and you skipped all the previous videos in this series, uh, take your dynamics menu and just shove it over here on this side. Uh, so now what we're going to do is, like we did before, we're going to go in here to dynamic and we're going to change our thickness. We're just going to crank that thickness up and uh, the smooth subdiv, let's turn it down to zero. So we're just looking at our geometry. And so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go in here to skin shader four. And let's talk about default functionality. So by default, we're going to have on masked off and on brushed on. On brush, we're going to get to in a minute. But we're going to focus on on mask for this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down control. I'm going to mask this corner. We have floor collision on, so it's going to collide with the floor. And we have gravity on. So when I go through here and I run the simulation, the cloth is going to fall to the floor. floor and you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to put on smooth subdiv of one. Just get a little nicer wrinkles going. Um, so basically, we ran that simulation. And it's going to, you know, simulate all the cloth. It's going to collide with the floor, and it's going to leave whatever's masked alone. So this is very useful for pinning certain areas of your mesh, or when you get into making a comforter later, uh, being able to pin uh, or mask broad areas and simulate through it and inflate things through masked areas. It's very, very useful, and that's the default functionality of ZBrush. However, there is this on mast option, which kind of flips how things work. So essentially, if I control tap in my canvas and I want to drag this around, uh, if I try to drag this around now, like a you know brush cloth BCK, and try to drag this around, it's going to grab all of this cloth and leave the mask alone because that's what I told it to do. If I do this, however, on mask, it's going to move the masked area around and the rest of the unmasked cloth is just going to kind of follow it. So what I can do is I can control click uh, this and then as I move this around, the rest of this cloth is going to follow it. In fact, I would probably go to BTC for transpose cloth, and now I can start moving uh, this around. And this is a good way to kind of go through and start folding stuff, kind of wrapping uh, folded around uh, cloth. But let's go ahead and undo back out of here. I'm going to show you a very easy way to roll up uh, a piece of cloth. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to mask this top area and then control tap to invert that, or even easier is hold down control and then alt and just unmask this top part and uh, it'll go ahead and mask the rest of it for you. So I'm gonna hit W to go into gizmo and I'm gonna alt tap right here on that mesh just to move my gizmo to this location. Now, remember we're in BTC, transpose cloth brush. And if unmasked is off and I try and move this around, it'll move the unmasked portions, but the masked ones, it's not moving. What we can do is unmasked on, so it's going to tell ZBrush, don't work on the unmasked points, concentrate the simulation on the masked area. So on the masked area, do the simulation. So that's going to kind of flip kind of what you would expect. And the cool thing about this is I can use this as a guide. So I can take, basically take this cloth and just kind of wrap, yeah, let's go ahead and turn off floor collision so we don't collide through the floor here. So I can go through here and I can just wrap this simulation around each other and give ourselves like a towel or a sleeping bag or whatever you want. So there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, have dynamic. Let's turn smooth up to one here. And that's our result. So we can go back and we can do BTR and rotate this thing around and then go back to BTC. So basically regular transpose back to cloth transpose. We'll go ahead and go back to our matte cap gray. We'll turn up smooth subdiv up to two maybe. And we can run our simulation with floor collision. And uh, as we run that simulation, uh, it's not going to do anything because we're telling it, again, this isn't masked. If we run, if we mask this and run it, it'll simulate this back end over here. But I forgot, if I have everything unmasked, it's not going to do anything. It's telling a ZBrush, hey, just where it's masked, simulate. So this is also useful too. If you just want to simulate this middle area here, just mask it out. You could even soften that mask by control clicking it. And of course, more masking options are down here underneath your masking menu. So if you want to grow the mask or blur the mask, there's also hotkeys in here. You can hold down control alt and tap to sharpen it, control tap to blur it out. And again, you want to know the basics of ZBrush, ZBrush for ideation, and on my YouTube channel, this uh, intro to ZBrush, those videos will get you caught up on the basics of masking. But since we have this mask now, we run the simulation, it's going to simulate uh, just in the mask area. Of course, what I really want to do is turn on mask off now that we've done our roll, and now I can run the simulation and it'll go ahead and drop down to the floor uh, as a nice little roll of carpet or whatever we're trying to make. Let's play around with this a little bit more. Let's go out of edit mode, hit control N. And I'm going to grab a poly mesh 3D here, go back in edit mode. And let's go down here all the way down to initialize. And I'm going to do, let's do a 16 by 16 by 16 res cylinder in the Y. 
and just because I like working in ZBrush space, I like to do a deformation unify. Let's also go in here to polygroups and we're just going to do a group by normals. So that's going to give me a polygroup on the top, bottom, and front. So let's hold down control shift and isolate this bottom part here and control shift drag to invert that visibility. So now we can go in here to geometry, modify topology, and then delete hidden. And since this is ZBrush 2021, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about functionality we can do in this new version. So what I'm going to do is go to B, Z, M and grab our Z modeler brush. I'm going to hover over an edge and there's now a new extrude edge loop. Now of course we're going to get more in, in depth on this but for now I'm just going to start dragging out and then tap alt and that's going to take an entire edge loop out. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this out here and then I'm going to hover over an edge. I'm going to switch this hovering over an edge, hit the space bar, switch to insert multiple edge loops. We're just going to click and drag and go ahead and give us some, some division. So we're going to do like a little top hat. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off our floor and let's use a little bit more of this on mask functionality. Now we're going to be playing around with polygroups maybe a little bit as we continue through this. I'm just going to hit control W. Let's make this all one polygroup. And I'm going to switch this over here to skin shader, skin shader four. And let's talk a little bit. Uh, there's another Z modeler functionality that's interesting. So I'm going to hover over this edge. We're going to hit space bar and we're going to go in here to transpose poly loop. So when I do that, I can go through here and very quickly just grab like, you know, grab this poly group here. And let's go to BTC, our cloth transpose brush. I'm going to hold down Alt and go to Unmesh Mesh Center. It's that little teardrop icon. So now when I pull this in, it'll go ahead and start cloth deforming our mesh. Let's go ahead and do also turn on dynamic. We'll keep smooth. Eh, smooth it too is fine. And we'll also throw in some thickness here so we can kind of start uh, generating some dynamic thickness. We'll turn on polyframe here. So the cool thing about this new Z modeler uh, technique is you can actually, you know, if I want to grab another poly group, what I'd normally have to do is hit Q to go into draw mode, go down here to another poly group, tap that to transpose it, go to mesh mesh center, scale it in, and then go out of this by hitting Q again. Instead of doing that, all I need to do is hit, uh, just tap off my object and it automatically takes me out of transpose mode. So if you go in here to preferences, Gizmo 3D, and there's now a tap to exit gizmo mode. By default, it's turned on. If you don't like that, uh, turn it off, but uh, boy, it saves you some clicks. So again, to show you how easy it is, I can just click here to transpose this, go to Unmesh Mesh Center. You can scale it in, scale it out. You can see how it's going to affect your underlying mesh, and then immediately just tap off, grab another ring, go to Unmesh Mesh Center, scale it in, scale it out, and we're off to the races. So again, because we're on Unmasked, we can use this. We can go down here, again, just tap off our mesh, go through here, grab this poly loop now. And I can use this to kind of uh, create a coin purse. I can go, you know what, let's go to Unmesh Mesh Center, reset this direction. I can just pull this cloth up into a little bowl here. I can scale it down and like sew up this little object. Oh, and that's another thing I should mention too. As I'm pulling, let's say I pull this up and then I want to like scale this in. As it comes in, you're going to see the other unmasked cloth is going to start reacting. It's like, oh, you're getting too close to me, so I'm going to start coming in too so we don't collide too much. It is going to eventually break. Um, but that's where the self-collision comes in. If I crank this up, it'll really drive that geometry in. It's really not going to want to cross over. So here you can see it's actually going to push that self-colliding geometry in. And the more I push it, again, it's trying to re retain those uh, relationship distances. So it's going to start affecting the other meshes. This is going to start pulling in because it's trying to maintain its surface area. If you turn self collision down to zero and I bring this in, the geometry won't care. It'll just crash right through it. So we can spread this out and spread this in and move this up. And again, we can just bring this in. And if we want it to self collide, bring that self collision up. And now as we push this around, it's going to start colliding with that underlying mesh. You can see as I push this down, uh, this mesh is going to start bubbling up so it doesn't collide. So a very, very cool way to go through here and do some, you know, cloth <laughs> interactions here. And again, you can use polygroups here. We're kind of using transpose. If I turn dynamic off and uh, we flipped our geometry, we actually pulled this inside out. So we can go down here to display properties, flip, and now you can see, okay, that's geometry on the outside now. So like we were doing, you can go through here and you can use Z modeler like transpose a poly loop, or if you want to make those a little bit more permanent, you can go through here, there's the modeler brush, for instance, you can say poly group poly loop, and you can just, you know, make these, uh, these ones right into their own poly group here. So now you can just control click this, it'll unmask just this poly group portion, go to unmash mesh center, control tap to invert that if you want to, or if you want to make this your unmasked portion, you know, the rest of this will follow, or you can control tap this, and then this will be the geometry, or you can turn off unmask at this point. 
I'll go back up here and turn on dynamic again. So now you can see with on masked off, all the rest of this geometry will kind of uh, follow in, or I can turn on masked on, and now this uh, unmasked geometry will drive that. And of course you can invert your mask and get uh, different results. And yeah, food for thought, if you want to make, uh, you know, some coins you want to put in this purse and turn that on as a collision volume, you can wrap this purse right around those coins and have it collide, and then you can have, you know, a purse, a leather purse full of coins uh, and have that effect. So one thing I want to bring up, because it's semi-relevant to what was in this video, we might bring it up later as well, is if I go in and grab a cylinder, go into edit mode, make polymesh 3D, and if I go in here to geometry and I click divide a couple times. Uh, in the olden days if I was good to go through here and like we did before if I um, grab my Z modeler brush BZM uh, go in here and say a poly group a poly loop and maybe drop down to sort of level one and say okay I want to make this new poly group. Uh, I can absolutely do that. So how cool is that? Because in the old days, if you had subdivision history, ZBrush just wouldn't allow you to do it. So I can go back up here to like subdivision level two and I can actually add uh, polygroups in here. And then I go up to subdivision level three and I can add even polygroups in here. So uh, it will, as long as you're not changing the vert order or anything, if you're just like going through here and like doing a um, transpose poly loop or something like that, uh, it'll go ahead and allow you to do that regardless of if you have subdivision history or not. So that's pretty cool. Same thing with this. If I want to hold down control or go in here and say transpose or hover over a face and say transpose polygroup all, uh, it'll allow me to go ahead and select those and I can go to like unmatched mesh center and just, you know, again, pull these in, even though I do have subdivision history.